What's going on YouTube? James Prigioni coming back at you from Jersey. It's the 20th of March today. Sorry if there's a little wind. Just giving an update, showing you guys how things are coming along. These are the, uh, the little glass domes we made. I'll show you how the seeds are doing in there. You can see things have really popped up. Plenty of brassicas, lettuces, some beans. You can see how densely the things are planted. We did it on purpose. And uh, this is a view of things from the back. You can see that uh, everything is pretty much seeds popping up now. So, let's see this one. So, this the things we transplanted in. More transplants. And then this was seeded uh, the 16th. This one has some things coming up also. Mostly brassicas. So they're all pretty much coming up. And uh, let me show you uh, in the greenhouse. Just want to do a little talking about. Got some seed balls made. Masanobu Fukuoka style. And see, we're gonna got an idea actually to throw these. We're gonna throw these throughout the yard, and we're also gonna probably make some more and throw them at uh, our favorite fishing spot for the summer. So, if anybody wants to see how we make these or has any questions, just let me know. And if you guys want, maybe we'll do a video because they weren't hard. We just used the dirt from our yard, and it's filled with lettuce seeds, brassica seeds, basically just a plant guild of a good. Uh, Gold hardy plants. So, I'm gonna do a little talking today about about why I guess not exactly why we're trying to grow our own food and become more self-sustainable, but why we're doing the things we're doing, why we we build cheap cheap greenhouse, why we're not going out and spending money, why we're farming organic, why we chose the back to Eden garden style, uh, why our garden looks like the side of a house almost with all the bricks and windows just things like that just gonna fill you guys in and just also to give my input on things and to share what I think about with other people and maybe they can put their input and we could both learn something maybe you guys can teach me something or vice versa so first of all I, oh, this thing keeps opening up on me We'll start with the why. Um, I started out reading, uh, I actually saw that documentary Fresh, and I saw Joel Salton in it, and he just, he lit a switch, and I think me and my brother, and he just inspired us. So we went out, we bought his, uh, his book, You Can Farm, we bought his two other books too, Passion, Poultry, Profit, and uh, beef one I can't think of it right now and we bought those books we read them we loved them fell in love with them and then uh, we he really made it seem like we could really grow our own food and uh, that we could really support ourselves he made it more plausible and everything so we went that route and then after reading Joel's book we wanted to go more things so he had some references in the back of his book about other people he read and people that really inspired him and throughout his book, he was always once mentioning one person I thought over and over, and it stuck with us. And uh, that person was Sir Albert Howard. And he talked about an agricultural testament, the book that he wrote. So next we moved over to that book, and we read that one, and man, that was an eye-opener. That was definitely an eye-opener. Uh, if you don't know Sir Albert Howard, you should look him up. He's, it's Sir Albert Howard because he was knighted. That's how, that's how influential he was. He actually wrote... Uh, agricultural testament which was literally his testament to agriculture he had farmed for about 40 years and was in the field of it and this is what he took from it and what he wanted to share with everybody he was a scientist when he was younger and he did all of his studying in agriculture and he was doing it in America but he, the government just and the agricultural field were putting restrictions on him and he couldn't do what he wanted to do so he actually moved him over to indoor India and uh, he moved over there because he wanted the freedom and not to have restrictions on what he was doing. So he worked there for a while. And uh, 
after all this work, he found out a few things, and the few things that he found out which were important were actually he, he invented composting, believe it or not. The hot composting was invented by Sir Albert Howard, and in the book, it's not even called composting, it's called the indoor process, because he invented it in indoor India. And uh, he was pretty much the father of organic gardening, so he, he really, uh, he, knew, he did a lot of things. He loved to say uh, that if you use artificial fertilizer to feed your plants, artificial food, artificial fertilizer leads to artificial food, artificial food leads to artificial animals, artificial animals ultimately lead to artificial people, and the only way to support artificial people is with artificial medicine. And I mean, that, that just rang a bell to us. So, we realized we wanted to go organic after reading that book. And uh, after another thing that Sir Robert Howard was huge on was mycorrhizae. And mycorrhizae, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a fungus that grows in the ground and it forms a symbiotic relationship with plant roots and they pretty much form an exchange between uh, roots. The, the, the um, mycorrhizae fungi gives the plants uh, any kind of nutrients and water, anything it needs. And in return, the plants gives the mycorrhizae fungi. So, Sir Robert Howard found this out and he he thought this was huge, and uh, obviously I think it's huge too. It's one of the basis of growing plants, I think, and with the organic method. And uh, he said that mycorrhizae fungi, they live and they feed on humus, and humus is just decayed organic matter. So this is again where the back to eating garden is going to come into play, because ultimately what do uh, fungus love? Fungus love wood chips. Fungus love wood, so and they love it when it's damp. So even in the uh, greenhouse where it's 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 dry on top, you dig down maybe I don't know a couple inches, and I mean this stuff is soaked. This stuff is black. So this is ex the perfect uh, environment to grow fungus, and the fungus oh look earthworm. Nice earthworm. Also earthworms too. <laughs> but this is the perfect environment. Another earthworm. Well, so look at that. In that little spot, three earthworms. So besides earthworms, uh, the wood chips are great for growing fungus. And uh, this fungus that ultimately we're looking to grow is the mycorrhizae fungus. And what happens is the mycorrhizae forms a huge net, uh, a fungal hyphae, it's called, almost like a root system. The hyphae is almost like the root system. And the, this root hyphae of the mycorrhizae, we're ultimately trying to get it through our whole garden, our whole wood chip garden. And this will be one huge net. Uh, Jack Spierko was talking about this recently. This will be one huge net of uh, mycorrhizae fungi, but our whole garden is going to be one huge net of it. So essentially, it, the garden, we're looking at the garden to be one huge fungal mycorrhizae net and then our, we're going to plant our plants into this mycorrhizae net and they're going to the roots are going to grow into this net and they're all going to form one symbiotic relationship it's almost like if you think about it if you've ever seen avatar and you've seen the pandora it's ultimately it's almost like that to the extent where everything is connected and the more plants that we plant we think the, the they're going to be able to trade more nutrients and uh, it's just an uh, idea we have that even the allopathia plants, the things that plants don't like about each other, we think that the mycorrhizae could filter that and they won't send the plant, it won't allow the plants to take out the bad things that they don't need. They'll only take out what they do need in exchange to the sugars for the mycorrhizae. So that's just, that's just, that's just one of the ideas we had. It just goes along with what Masanoma Fukuoka says, that life supports life. We just want our fungus to support our plant roots and everything to have a huge balanced ecosystem. Because ultimately a balanced ecosystem is a healthy ecosystem. And that's our idea with the wood chips. That's why we're doing the back to eating gardening. And then why do we have rocks uh, out on our um, garden here? Because we're starting seeds, and the rocks actually work as a thermal mass. This is an idea by Sepp Holzer. The rocks take the heat, or the 
from their sun's rays during the day and then throughout the night when it cools off they'll slowly release their heat and help maintain a more stable temperature so we're just help helping uh, our ceilings at night because it's been below 28 in he here it's been 26 27 at night we actually lost a lot of our seeds in the greenhouse because the the plastic just wasn't thick enough for at night some of the things survived but it's just it's too cold and everything out there you saw is is thriving it's looking great so the the rocks are working as heat sinks and the the glass is just thick enough to help to keep the heat in so that's why we're doing that and also the dense planting um it looks like the stuff some of the stuff could take over but worst comes to worst we we could thin this stuff out if we need but right now the plants planted so densely together the roots and everything about the plants are just keeping each other warm they're just help help helping raise each other and bring each other up and we have so much nutrients in the ground here that uh, we're not worried about too much nutrients being taken out I think I read somewhere that plants take up three percent of the nutrients they need from the ground and actually about ninety seven percent of the rest is taken up through the air and through sunlight so plants give only need a little bit and they give off way than more than they need so we're just trying to do what, again what Joel Salton does and just do as much solar conversion as possible build as much biomass because biomass is capital more biomass more composting more everything more life so what we're trying to do is grow life and we're trying to grow diversity and uh, we're looking to do that through plant guilds and just growing a balanced ecosystem and that's just that's that's our thought that's my thoughts behind it that's our thoughts behind it that's why we're doing what we did do and that's why uh, that's why we're going the more natural organic me method and that's why we're planting so densely if anyone had any questions or anything that's why so that's that's what I think about things that's just my understanding of it and I've never bounced this off anybody or anything so I just felt like I wanted to get it out there so if, if anybody has any ideas or any remarks about it please let me know I'd, lo I'd love to hear something and also I'll show you another another technique Joel Salton uh, that we learned from Joel Salton these frames all these frames here they look like uh, the wood frames this is all scrap wood but actually it's um we didn't even use nails all we used were simple hand tools and we built these frames so we can just take them apart when we're done with them and storm very easily taking up little space let me just take this apart see this they all break down it's just almost like a little notching method we're just they're all tied in like that so we didn't even use any nails we used a handsaw chisel and uh a hammer pretty much so it does not hard it takes a little work and uh, sorry if this video got long and it was mostly talking but things are looking good things are moving along and uh, thanks for listening and following along if you follow for the whole thing and please feel free to respond and let me know what you guys think thanks guys if you want to know how to make the seed balls or want a video about it, just let me know. Thanks, guys. James Prigioni's out.